Hi everyone, I'll be showing how to fix your systemd boot bootloader if you're not able to boot into Arch Linux. So this is how my systemd boot boot menu looks like when starting my computer. So the best way to learn is to break it and then fix it. And I'm going to go into Arch and break my systemd boot. And I'm going to open up File Manager or Dolphin. And I'm going to go into my slash boot directory. And if you can't open it up, it's most likely because of a permissions issue, but that's okay. I'm just opening this up just to make it easier to see what's inside this folder. And if there's anything I need to do, I'll use the terminal. So inside the slash boot directory, I got the EFI folder. So if I go into it, and there are three folders, boot, Linux, and systemd. And if I go into systemd, there's a systemd boot x64 EFI file. And this file is used to load up system D boot when your computer starts up and going back out, going into a Linux folder, there's nothing in here, going back out and the boot folder, and there's a boot x64.efi file. And this is a fallback bootloader file. Actually, this file here is the same as what we saw earlier. So it's actually the same as the system D EFI file here. So I can either corrupt these files or I can just delete them. I'm going to delete them. So going back out, going back out again, and I'll delete the EFI folder. So I'm going to open up a terminal and I'll sudo in, put in my password. And I'll remove the folder, rm-rf slash boot slash EFI. And we see it's removed. And if I go into the loader directory, so this is where the configuration files are located for systemd boot. And I go into the entries, and then I have a few entries here. There's the Arch Linux entry, there's the fallback entry, there's the EFI shell entry, and there's Windows 10. I have the EFI shell and the Windows 10 conf files here because I am dual booting. So if I go back out, and then inside here, there's the keys directory, and there's nothing in there. And then I have the other files here, the entries.srl and the loader.com file and the random seed. So I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to delete the loader directory completely. And I'll delete the loader directory. So it's been removed. And then now I have the EFI shell x64.efi. But let's just say that this is no longer there as well. So I'll remove it. And going back, refresh, and it's been removed. And if I restart my computer, it'll go into Windows. And if I check the BIOS, we'll see that before it would show two entries, a Windows bootloader entry and, and a second entry. For me, it's labeled as UFI OS, which is for Arch Linux. And for you, it may be labeled as Arch. And then after I removed all the files, it would be gone. It would no longer be there. So now I'm going to fix system deboot and I'm going to need the installation media. So I'm going to restart my computer and boot the installation media. The installation media has started up and I'm going to be selecting the first option, Arch Linux install medium. And now I'm in the shell. So I'm going to list my partitions on my drive. So I'm going to do an ftisk l And I'm going to search for my disk, which is dev sda, 476 gigabytes. Dev sdb is my USB drive that has the Arch Linux installation media. So dev sda, so there's my partitions there. Dev sda1 is my EFI partition for Windows. SDA2 is a Microsoft Reserve partition. SDA3 is my C drive for Windows. SDA4 is the Windows recovery environment. And SDA5 is the EFI partition I have for Arch. And SDA6 is my root partition. So SDA5 and SDA6, I'm going to have to mount them and make them available. So first I'm going to mount SDA6 and I'll mount it to the MNT directory or mount directory. So mount dev 
sta6 going into the mount directory. And then now I'm going to do sta5 and I'm going to mount it to the slash mount slash boot directory. And I'm going to arch to root into the mount directory. And now I'm going to reinstall system D boot, boot, CTL, and then the path is going to be slash boot, and then install. And we see here that it's created and copied everything into the slash boot directory. And then at the bottom there, it mentions about the mount point slash boot, which backs the random seed file is world accessible which is a security hole, and also as well as the random seed file, which is a security hole. And the reason why is because I'm in the live environment and the way I mounted the slash boot directory. So that's the reason why, which is fine as I'm just in the live environment. If I go into the slash boot directory, ls-al, and we see the EFI directory and the loader directory is back. And now I'll need to create a loader configuration file for Arch. So going into loader, l-al, and then going into entries, l-al, and we see there's nothing there, so I'm going to create one. And before I use nano to do it, I'll need to get the part UUID of my root partition, or SDA6. So I'll type in block ID. And then we see there, there's dev sda6, and then I'll need the part UUID. And so I'm going to parse it out. Block ID, dash s, part UUID, dash o, get the value, dev sda6. And I'll redirect it to arch.conf. And now I'll open up nano, arch.conf. All right, we got the value there. And now I'm going to put in the title, Arch Linux, 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 and then the file, and then the initial RAM disk. And then the options, root equals part UUID equals, and going to use this value. And then zswap enabled equals zero for me. Read, write, and then the root file system type. For me, it's ext4. And then control X to exit. Save, yes. And write it to arch.com, enter. I do an ls-al and we see my file there. Now I'm going to go up to the parent directory, ls-al, and there's the loader.com file. I'm going to open up it with nano. And I'm going to give it a timeout value of 3, I'll remove the pound, control x to exit, save yes, write to file, enter. And now I'm going to exit out of the true root. Now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. Alt control delete. So I no longer need my USB drive with the installation media. I'm going to remove it. All right, so I have two boot options again. And first boot option is Windows, so I'll have to change it. So it's UFI OS or Arch. And then save changes and exit. So systemd boot comes up, so that's good. And we see Arch Linux here and reboot into firmware interface. So I'm going to test it out. Go into Arch. All right, and so it's booted into Arch. And so compared to before, I had a few other entries, the fallback entry, UFI shell, and Windows 10 entry. And I need those because I'm dual booting. So I'm gonna fix those as well. So first gonna do the fallback entry, open up a terminal, sudo in, put in my password, go into the boot directory, and then loader, and then entries, ls-al. And I'm going to copy the arch conf file, call it the new file archfallback.conf, and then open up nano with it. And I'll call this 
Arch Linux, Linux, and then fallback. And then the initial RAM disk, the file is going to be different. Open up Dolphin. And then we see here it's called initial RAM FS Linux fallback. Fallback, exit, save, yes. Write the file, enter. LS-AL, and we see the file there. And then the next entry that I'll need is the UFI shell, and I'll need it in order to boot into Windows. So I'm going to assume it's completely removed and have to reinstall it again. So I'm going to use Package Manager, Pacman, to install it. Pacman dash capital S, EDK2 shell. Proceed with installation, yes. And it's installed. And then now I'm copy the shell EFI file into the boot directory. And then create a new loader entry for the UFI shell. And I'll call it EFI shell x64. And the title, call it UFI shell x64. EFI file, EFI shell x64.efi. And then control x to exit, save, yes, enter. L-al. And we see now three entries. And then now I'll need to get the part UUID for my Windows EFI partition. So when I do fdisk-l and looking for dev sda1, and so it's dev sda1 is my Windows EFI partition. So now I'm going to type in block ID and I'm going to look for sda1 and get the part UUID. So it's starting with 0b1c. And now I'm going to restart my computer and go to the UFI shell. Load into the UFI shell. And here it shows the mapping table. And if you have multiple devices, you can just type in map and use page up and page down to scroll up and down. And so what I'm looking for is the part UUID and starting with 0B1C. So it's at the top there, so it's FS0. And I want the alias. HD0 A65535A1. And then now I'm going to go back into Arch. I'm going to do a reset. Go into Arch. Open up a terminal. I'm going to sudo in. Put in my password. And I'm going to go into the boot directory. Loader. And then entries. And ls-al. And now I'm going to create an entry for Windows. Put in my title, Windows 10, and then EFI. It's going to load up the EFI shell, x 64 EFI. And then the options, no interrupt, dash no map, no version. Needs to be shown. And then the alias, which was HD0A65535A1. And then the path to the Windows Boot Manager file. EFI, Microsoft, boot, boot, mgfw.efi. And then Control X to exit, save, yes. Write the file, Windows 10. And this will work for Windows 11 as well, as the path is also the same. And now I'm going to restart my computer again to ensure I can get into Windows. All right, so there's the Windows entry there. And so I'm going to go into it. And it booted into Windows as expected. So that's it. That's how you can fix your systemd boot bootloader in Arch Linux. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.